What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's project of putting a radiator in the white Volvo here. I suppose we're going to take the one out of the blue Volvo and put in here because I don't have a radiator. Uh, I've been putting this off. It's had a slight crack or small crack in the top of the radiator. Um, it's been leaking a little bit. Maybe you had to add a gallon every three weeks or so. So I hadn't been that worried about it. And then it got worse. I tried uh, putting a little JB weld on it and that held for I don't know, maybe a week. I you know, took a die grinder and ground the crack out a little bit, put some JB weld on it. Didn't hold. And uh, so I said, well, I'll try heating a zip tie up and heating it up with a torch and melting it in there. And anyway, I made it worse. And uh, so now I got to get a radiator. And I looked, I was going to order one. And time I pay expedited shipping in order to get one in time, uh, it was going to cost me over $700. And I hate to pay that when I have a good radiator in the blue truck that's just sitting there, not doing anybody any good. Anyway, we're going to uh, start getting the other one pulled over there and start getting this one uh, pulled as well. And get that one over in here, hopefully, because there was nothing wrong with the radiator in the other truck. It was uh, in really good condition. Uh, best I know, I think it was put in there in 2000. 14, 13, 14, somewhere in there. And uh, so hopefully it's still good. I think these things will usually last about 10 years or so, these plastic ones, or maybe a little longer, some of them. This one here appears to be the one that came in the truck. Uh, so the truck is 14 years old. So if that one over there lasts another three, four, or five years, you know, it's pretty good. So this is the old blue truck here. And uh, so far, I do not see a crack in this one in the same spot. The intercooler is different, so it's going to have to be taken off. And I'm probably just going to drop the whole radiator and frame in there together. And uh, if the shroud's the same, I'll leave it bolted on there as well. There's some minor differences in these two trucks on certain things. Like I say, the intercooler, I can tell it hooks up a little different right there the way it's done. But uh, anyway probably just gonna keep this truck making a part stroke I've already been robbing parts off of it I've got the new airbags I put on the uh, the steer axle here off I pull the batteries off of it and uh, whatnot so that's turning into be a parts truck which is kind of handy to have around all right guys I'm gonna be doing this outside because it's more room out here and I need to get or be able to get the tractor over here to pick this up I believe to make it a little easier uh, me and my dad picked this radiator or cooling stack up out of this truck um, whenever we did the uh, the front cover had the oil leak put the camshaft in and it was all both of us could do to pick that up and it sets down in that frame so far you see how far it goes you got to pick up about two foot in order to get it on top of the frame rail and then once you're standing up there uh, it's very difficult to get down without falling and trying to hold it and trying not to damage it. Um, this truck here used to have a diesel APU on it and uh, it had coolant lines coming off of the engine going back to. That's what these valves were for. I don't know what this valve here was originally for. It wasn't hooked up when I got the truck, but there's a valve right there and I've got the hose that I cut off the APU unit going down there and so I've used, always used it as a coolant drain. And uh, I've got these five gallon gas cans here. Yeah, the antifreeze going in there. And uh, that's what I'm using these five gallon gas cans for. I've got some better gas cans. I don't use these pieces of junk anymore because you can't hardly get gas to pour out of them because this great nozzle here that the EPA uh, said is so great and it, it's horrible. So I've got some better gas cans. And so I use this for draining the coolant out of this truck in. All right guys, so I've got everything on the blue truck here. Uh, I've got the radiator just about ready to come out. Uh, Jake called me a little bit ago and swore that he's coming over here. Um, it's about dark. I've got some light I'm gonna set up. Uh, so that shouldn't be an issue. It's still hot out here. It's too hot to do this in the middle of the daytime. You pass smooth out out here in about 15 minutes. But uh, the reason, as I say again, I didn't get the radiator. I wanted to go with aluminum radiator instead of this plastic uh, end tanks here. You can buy the plastic aftermarket radiator for around 500 bucks that's got the plastic end tanks. I wanted one with aluminum end tanks so that I never had to worry about it again, hopefully. 
but uh, I waited too late to order it. As I say, I was going to have to pay expedited shipping on it to get it here. Hopefully in time, that's assuming it didn't get damaged, they didn't send me the wrong one, all that stuff. So it's gonna cost me 700 something dollars to do that. And you know, as I say, that's kind of a, still a gamble because there's still a chance of getting lost or damaged in shipping. And then you got your money tied up, your truck's still not running. And you know, you just set at the house for like a week till you get something. So we're gonna go ahead, since I got this on this truck, go ahead and get it swapped over and get the other truck back on the road. Uh, so this is, the deal with this is the only difference I think is this radiator. This radiator here on this blue truck has a transmission cooler built in the bottom of the radiator. Um, so that just won't be hooked up. <clears throat> you know, most of the aftermarket radiators you have, you buy will be like that. The radiator in the white truck does not have the transmission cooler feature in the bottom of it. So this radiator should swap in the white truck, but the white truck radiator won't go in this truck because you have nowhere to hook your transmission lines up to on the bottom of the radiator. Uh, if that makes sense um, So anyway, as I say this radiator was replaced in this truck. I think in 2013 or 14 and uh, So it's about however old that makes it seven years old uh, Something like that. So hopefully it's got another, you know, two to four or five years of life left in it I don't know. We'll see I suppose But I've got everything about ready to uh, to lift out of here. I think I got all the hoses undone uh, once we lift the whole cooling stack out, then we will take the uh, intercooler off of the front of the radiator. I think the fan shroud can stay attached because it's uh, this rubber gasket right here. That should slide right out past that, I believe, memory serves me right. I've got the AC condenser unbolted off the front here. Just let it lean forward like that off the front, and then we'll pick this up out of here. So I'm going to get the tractor rigged up over here. Uh, some kind of way so that I'll be able to lift this thing straight up at least hopefully All right guys, so what I have in mind is I've swapped over my hay forks that I made because they're narrower and That provides a lifting bar and what I think I can do is run me a strap To each side of this radiator to the hay fork right there and pick straight up and lift this uh, Up out of here and get it up out of here I'm going to get some lights set up so I can see a little bit better out here first. All right, guys. We got a light tower hooked up to the lawnmower. Drug outside set up. Pointed over this direction where we can see to lift the radiator out. I've got uh, straps set up right here. Jake has yet to show up. Got Missy helping me, though. Um, anyway, I got it ready to lift straight up, at least hopefully. And uh, this one here. I'll be able to see to uh, start taking stuff loose on it as well with that light tower sitting there. I hope I got enough room to uh, get my tractor in between these two trucks right here and uh, get there. I don't, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. Uh, Jake swears he's coming, but he hadn't got here yet.
we got it out of there. Hopefully it didn't tear up nothing. Don't think we did. Uh, it was trying to catch on some stuff. I was trying to feather it. It's hard to tell exactly how much pressure you're putting on something uh, with hydraulics. I was just trying to watch it, watch my straps. The bolts there. There's the other one on the frame over there on the other side. We got her pulled out of there. This is the uh, transmission cooler that I was talking about that's built in the bottom of this radiator. And the other one does not have that, but it doesn't matter. We're just gonna leave it unhooked. Uh, I've got to take this intercooler off of this uh, radiator frame here. See what holds it on, looks like. A bolt there. One there. Two in the top. And this bracket here got to come all apart and we'll be able to separate that because the intercooler is different ready to set down in there or well I guess it's the new one it's the old one out of the blue truck the new one going in the white truck but it appears that it's about clogged up as you can tell there so we're gonna have to wash this out before we can put it in there and uh, the intercooler was froze up on these studs here or bolts whatnot Alright guys, so uh, we finally got this one out. It did not go as planned. I did not film it. It just, it wasn't going very well. Uh, what happened was, this intercooler is different than this one. This is out of the white truck. You see where it got hung up right here. This one is shorter. It's made different. It came right out. I did not know that. So when I went to pull this one out, it got hung uh, on the engine cross member. And it was down in between this lip. Well, by the time I figured out it was hung, uh, it would not go back down. And so there was only one way to go, and that was up and uh, let whatever broke break. So finally got it out. I don't think uh, that we damaged the intercooler other than put a few dents and some flues on the other side. But I got to figure out how to straighten this back out. I believe that steel right there. I think when I take this band clamp off, this bolt's gonna break, but I'll get a new bolt. Um, I wound up knocking a hole in the AC condenser. Um, it fell in the process, so I gotta take the AC condenser off the other truck and put on there now. So hopefully we can get this swap back over and get this straightened back out and get it put back together. And hopefully things that go back together are a little better than they come apart. Because this intercooler here is made different uh, the way it's done, I think that would could be put in there if we swap the hoses as well. But I'm going to try to see if I can just straighten that out right there. Tell me that big hammer where it's at.
probably good to drive. Oh, one thing, you can trip everything. has this on it and you want to pull the intercooler out you have to take this piece off because it'll stick in the engine cross member and cause you lots of frustration and you'll bend it and tear out lots of stuff AC condenser <laughs> yeah AC condenser intercooler fan shroud everything else that hangs on along the way it'll be expensive yeah <laughs> that's why you need to have a spare truck like that <laughs> spare truck spare part Pick this up and put it on the bear. Uh, my helper Jake finally showed up by the way about what 10 o'clock? 9.45. Alright. It went downhill from there. Went downhill down. from there. It went down. <laughs> okay.
guys, I've got everything except for pulling a vacuum, recharging the AC system uh, because I knocked a hole in the condenser whenever this thing went sideways on us. Uh, but I still got to hook that intercooler pipe up right there. I don't have a clamp for it. The clamp broke whenever I removed it. And uh, I have a clamp for the other truck. I actually got three of them. But this is a different size than what the other truck is. This is a three and a half. The other uses a four inch. Um, so the clamp won't shrink down small enough. So I have to go get a clamp for that. Um, well, today now, because it's uh, almost 5 a.m. Uh, Jake left about four. Uh, thanks to him for coming by and giving me a hand with this. Because it definitely went sideways in a hurry. Um, that clamp right there, as I say, I couldn't get the bolt out, and the other one is made different. It don't have that V-band clamp with a little end piece. It's just a straight intercooler right there. So I didn't think there would be any problem with taking the clamp off the boot, sliding the boot back, just like the other one, picking straight up. But what I did not know is it will not clear the engine cross member on this truck like it will the other. And you can probably see that down in there. But it being dark, we didn't see it until I lifted it up. Once I lifted it up, uh, it wedged, and uh, then we couldn't get it to go back down. And it wasn't much way to do but just keep picking up and rip it out of there. It, it just got hung up. There wasn't nothing to do about it. It was a little bit too late to, uh, to do anything with it at that point. Once I realized that it was hung, it bent that flange and got hung on the bolt down there. I think something, yeah, that bolt head, I don't know if you can, camera's picking that up, but there's some bolts down there. The pipe had got over the top of that bolt, was hung on the bolt, so it wouldn't go back down. It didn't want to come up either. It wasn't the one thing to do. Keep pulling up, hope for the best. And uh, whenever it turned loose, the uh, AC condenser, something snatched and uh, caught the line on it and ripped it out and made a little bit of a mess. But uh, luckily I got another AC condenser in stock as well. We got that put on there, just got to, uh, Pull a vacuum, recharge it, all that good stuff, and uh, get a clamp. I've got it full of antifreeze. Should be go good to go. I'm gonna crank this thing up and uh, back it up so I can get my light tower out from over there in the corner and uh, move away from there. All right, guys, I about got everything wrapped up other than uh, getting out the steam cleaner and cleaning everything off um, where that coolant sprayed all over everywhere. The whole truck needs to be washed anyway. It's been raining, got road film all over it, the whole truck's dirty, so I uh, need to get that out and do it. But as far as uh, getting a radiator and installed, everything, everything seems to be good. Got a new clamp down there on the intercooler uh, boot down there. This is the radiator out of the uh, white truck. I'm gonna take the uh, fan tread off of it and throw the radiator away. See what I'm talking about about the bottom of this? Uh, not having a transmission cooler in the bottom of this radiator that came out of the white truck That's the difference in the radiator, which like I say it doesn't matter on you can put one with a transmission cooler in a truck That came without but you can't do it vice versa But uh, anyway, that was no good. I was taking the fan shroud off of it And uh, I didn't see any reason to put it back in the blue truck Because the transmission lines won't hook up anyway, and the radiator is no good. So I'm just gonna throw it in the junk pile so anyway, that about wraps up this video. Uh, you never know what, when you do a job, which one of the jobs you do is gonna go south on you. Uh, this one kind of went downhill pretty quick. Started off good. Uh, I've had the radiator out blue truck twice, I think. This makes the third time. Um, so everything was, you know, free of rust, corrosion, whatnot, for the most part. Everything come right out of there, no issues. Um, this one here, I couldn't get that stupid uh, band clamp off up under the truck out there in the yard. And I should have drove it up on blocks out there, give myself some more room to get up under there and, and work a little better and maybe cut it off out there or something. But anyway, so I thought it would clear, took that uh, boot off, uh, intercooler boot, just like the other truck is designed, started picking up on the radiator, it got wedged in there, it was downhill from there. I couldn't get it to go back down, couldn't get it to go up, pried on it, pulled on it, lifted on it with the tractor. Finally got it popped out of there, wound up knocking a hole in the AC condenser in the process. As I say, it just, it all went downhill real quick. But it's all good now. Had everything I needed other than uh, that clamp to get it back going. 
So uh, got everything back going now, and I'm gonna pull it back outside and, and get the steam cleaner out and wash it. I'll probably do that tomorrow. But uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.